Hi guys. All right. So, sewing 101, mending a hole. <laughs> All right. So, what does a tank top with a hole in it right here have to do with it? A pair of lace thong underwear. Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> so, this is an inexpensive pair of lace thong underwear from uh, Walmart. I bought it specifically for doing this repair. I don't wear thong underwear. Not that you need to know that. All right. Um, this is a tank top I bought when I was in Las Vegas with my girlfriends and we were doing our art retreat and I love this tank top. I wear it all the time and if you live in Las Vegas or you're going there for a visit <laughs> and you go to Walgreens which is where I bought this shirt and you see these tank tops I would love to have somebody send me another one in I just cut the label out and threw it away. Hold on. Uh, extra large. <laughs> um, I'd love two of them. They're not expensive, but I do love it. Anyway, if you live in or you're visiting Las Vegas and you have a chance to go to Walgreens on the Las Vegas Strip, they have that's the best place to buy souvenirs, FYI. And um, when I was there, they had these, and I would love to have one or two more because I do love this shirt. It's not, you know, it's just thin knit material. So anyway, when I came back from Alaska, and yes, I took it with me to Alaska, it had a hole in it. The laundry people on the board ship put a hole in it. Anyway, so we're going to fix it. The first thing we've got to do is change the thread in our machine because we were just I was just making journal covers because I'm filming this the same day I'm fi I filmed that. And I've got white thread in here. That won't work on this black tank top. So first thing we're going to do is change our thread. So I just pulled the top thread out. And here's some black thread. pull these labels off because sometimes it, you can just poke it on with the label on there and sometimes it's just a bigger pain than it needs to be. That's easier to just take them off. We're mixed media artists. Don't throw the labels away. I'm saving them. I just stuck them to my shelf. You know they'll show up in a journal cover somewhere. My thread holder has this piece that holds the thread spool on so I'm going to stick that on the front. Before I thread the machine, I'm going to see if I have a black bobbin. I do. Yay. That means I don't have to wind one. So I can just thread my machine. There's a catch there, a catch here to go down and around. Got to bring this little arm. Oh, you can't see. Oops. There we go. Let's do that again. All right. So I've got my thread spool in. I'm going to put the, there's a catch here. There's another one here. I bring the thread down and around. I moved the wheel here until this, the needle moves and this little arm comes up and it goes in there. It goes down here. There's a catch. There's a catch on the needle and then it goes through the needle. Every machine's a little bit different, so look in your machine's instruction book for how your machine should be threaded. You should never have it too far from you, so you can remind yourself how to do stuff with your machine. I still have to remind myself. All right, so I'm gonna pull this bobbin out. I'm gonna put this one in. Now, it should wind clockwise, which it is. For my machine, again, everyone's different, but I think most of them are like that. Put the needle down and pull it up again, and then I'm going to pull on this upper thread. And that, as I'm doing that, and it's going to bring a loop of bobbin thread up, and I'm going to pull that bobbin thread out. So now both of my threads are up to the top of the machine. That's what we want. I did all that. But I need to change the needle because I have a big thick denim needle in here and this fabric is all pretty thin. So I have a smaller size 11 needle here that I'm going to pull out. And I'm going to take this needle out. There's a little screw here. So I'm going to take the needle out. I'm not going to go too far with it because I'll probably just put it back when I'm done. I don't use these small needles too much. I'm 
going to insert the new needle. There's usually a certain way the needles have to go in, a certain way that the hole has to face. So again, look at your owner's manual. And I'm going to tighten up the screw after I get it in there. For mine, the hole should be going front to back. There we go. And pull the thread through. There we go. Alrighty, we've got it done. Yay! Alright, so now we are going to cut a piece of lace off this underwear. Now, of course, you can buy stretch lace at the fabric store, but sometimes it can be a little hard to find. So I thought it was just easier to buy a piece of cheap underwear, and honestly, and get the stretch lace that way. So the first thing I'm going to do have to do is take the label off. I'm not going to toss the rest of the underwear because it might come in handy for fixing something else. So. There we go. Maybe you have a piece of clothing that you could use for this type of repair. And another t-shirt maybe if you have something like this you need to fix. So I'm just kind of disassembling the underwear. Brand new, never worn. And I'm actually thinking that part of the crotch of the underwear that might work. Okay. Cut it off here. This is the whole crotch of the underwear. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut away the black cotton that they have on the inside here. because I just want the lace. I should really get my sewing scissors out for this. I do have them. So these are actually surgical scissors. Oh, here we go, surgical scissors. I use for sewing and embroidery needlework. These are actually Ginger black sewing shears I've had Uh, more than 20 years. I've had, the, and, and I don't think they've ever needed to be sharpened. Do I have applique scissors? Oh, I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Applique scissors are funny looking scissors. They're made to cut away things like that, this without um, cutting the wrong fabric. So they're made to hold the fabrics apart while you're cutting. Yes, and they do a fabulous job. These are much, much sharper than the scissors I use every day on paper and stuff like that. Don't use your fabric scissors on paper, they'll dull them. Okay, so this is trash. So now we have this little piece of lace. I'm going to line it up. Can you see what I'm doing? No, you can't see. There we go. So I'm going to line the piece of lace up here with the back of the shirt. Take a couple of pins. So if I'm going to do, I, there's a lot of different ways you could do the repair, you know, by pinching it and sewing it together, but I thought, why not just add an extra piece of fabric there, and um, it may not look like it was always that way, but it will look more interesting, and honestly, it's going to be under my hair, so who really cares? Now, my only thought is, do I want to put this all the way down? Do I want to just do it low? So I think I'm going to cut up one side of the lace 
and I'm cutting the edge off. So now I have the edge is free, the decorative edge. And then I'm going to trim this off. And if I do this right, yep. I can make it look like an applique. So I'm going to wrap this piece of the side around until it meets this other scallop on the other side. And I'm going to pin it together. myself with the pins. So when I sew it together I can make it look like an applique. Alright, so let's get it sewn down. Now when you're sewing stretch fabrics, you either want to use a serger or you want to use a zigzag stitch. So in this case, we're going to use a zigzag stitch. And I am going to, where did that little piece of fabric go? See, I'm going to test it on this other piece of lace that I had. And you know what, I had that black knit. That'll give me an approximation of what we're going to be working with on the t-shirt. We're going to test our stitching and our stitch length and our zigzag. So I'm going to do about a two so it'll be little and I'm going to lower the stitch length to like just under three. The width is two. I think that's better. And that needle's working well. Let's see. The stitch is a little bit long. Let's do it. I would like it closer together. This is why you do a test. Yeah, that's better, I think. I need my reading glasses. Black on black is really hard to see. I'm just testing and testing until I get it right. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now that I got it where I want it, now I'm going to cut this. This is our test piece. So you can see all the different lines of stitching. Maybe you can. It's, it is black on black. But I've got it where I want it. So now I'm going to take my tank top. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the old labels or take off the old labels because they're just going to be in my way they're going to show through I don't want them on there so we're going to take them off I could seam rip them I'm not going to I'm just going to cut the bulk of them off So I'm going to start at the upper edge and I'm going to zigzag all around this piece of lace I've added. Now the trick to this is don't pull on the fabric. You want it to go through the machine as flat as possible. You still want to stop in the corner with your needle down and turn.
Okay, then we're going to go around. Pulling the pins out as we go. We don't want to sew over the pins, remember. We're going around a curve, so I'm going slow and I'm holding my fabric and I'm taking my time. forth at the beginning uh, where I met the beginning. I'm going to trim all my threads. Now, frequently when you're doing something like this you might get it on there and you have to go back and you have to add some more stitches somewhere so if we have to do that I won't be surprised. And like I said this is my favorite shirt so I'm going to do what I need to. So that's pretty good but see, see how this is sticking up? I want that to be down. So I'm going to add a second row of stitching to hold that down. I'm going to start over here on the other side this time. threads off. That's pretty good. Make sure it's all on there good and there's no, I didn't miss anything. Doesn't look like I did. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to the back side where the hole is. And I'm going to stick my applique scissors in the hole and I'm going to cut the knit fabric around, out around the inside of the fab, extra fabric I just added. Carefully, without cutting the lace. This is an optional step. You don't have to do this. This part's a little more advanced than just adding a patch of fabric. But at, at adding a patches of fabric is a great way to practice your zigzag stitches. And you can do it in a square if you're nervous about trying to do a curve. Do a square. Squares are easier. So now we have that. Yeah. So now my tank top is fixed. There's no hole. I've got this cute piece of lace in the back. There we go. I'd still like another one. So if you, any of you are near, nearer in Las Vegas, I'll pay you back. <laughs> All right. So it's a quick and easy patch out of um, fabric that was non definitely non-traditional because I used a pair of underwear, new underwear, not used underwear. <laughs> but um, when you have to patch uh, any of your clothing, 
um, no matter what it is, look and see what you have maybe in your donation pile that you can use that you can cut up to make your patch with. Um, think outside the box and look around and see what you've got. That's it for today. Have fun practicing your sewing and your zigzag stitches. And don't be afraid to practice with your machine and have some fun with it, yeah? All right, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye.